Well, stand up. Turn the. Oh, we're trying to balance out so the ship won't sink. Okay. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. You gonna be there? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the Savior shall gather and the Lord is called a gun, I'll be there. When the to get a good deep breath because this is going to be a breather song okay it's uh just over in the glory land y'all remember that song yep all right
That's a breathing song, ain't it? Hey, y'all remember this other song that's called Lord, I Lift Your Name on High? Why don't we do that tonight, okay? Goody, goody. Hey, all right. Well, there you go. The little eight-year-old just gave her life to the Lord, and I tell you what, the devil was mad tonight. Ain't that something? And we old grown folks. Mm. Hey, let's pray and ask God to give us a blessing tonight and let us see what we got for us tonight. Lord, we come to you again tonight. Once again, thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, Lord, and uh, we've had a great day with you, and we want to continue that. And Lord, we want to tell you right now that we do love you, and uh, we want to thank you for the souls that you saved today, Lord. We want to thank you for all your blessings that you give to us, Lord. We want to thank you for the folks that come out here tonight. Lord, we just want to thank you for you being who you are, Lord, and what you mean to us, and so thank you, Lord. We love you. But Lord, if you would... Once again tonight, our pastor's going to stand right here where I'm standing. And I pray right now that you'll take him, you'll bless him, you'll hide him behind that cross, give him every word that he needs, that whatever we hear, Lord, that we can take it, use it to help someone else again this coming up week. So, Lord, thank you for that in advance. And, of course, you know, Lord, all of our folks on our prayer list, what needs to be done. Would you bless them and heal them? So thank you, Lord. We love you again. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Choir's coming down, unless they want to set up there. Poppy, are you a star? I says, no, baby, I'm not a star. She says, you're a star to me. Amen. That's the only star I need right there. Need, and the one in heaven, of course. Amen. For y'all that know me, I'm Tommy Davis. And for some of you don't, I'm still Tommy Davis. <laughs> okay? And we're going to sing this little thing I, I wrote, uh, see, about seven, six or seven years ago. I prayed a long time for God to help me write a good song, a gospel song. And uh, it's kind of, I guess you could say, uh, it worked out that I got saved just about like this song is, okay? It's called No End to Heaven.
night I had a dream about heaven It was so real to me I came face to face with Jesus And he gave his welcome to me And are now good faithful servant Into the joy of the Lord And such a sweet feeling over picking. <laughs> glad. Are you even glad that you can remember? Somebody didn't get in that. It'll be all right. Well, actually, that's what we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, if you'll go there, we're doing a chronological Bible study in New Testament. So we're going to be looking, continuing in Ephesians, where, remember, Paul says, And you, beginning in chapter 2, verse 1, And you he hath quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's, that was our condition when God found us, not when we found God. God wasn't lost, we were. So here we've gone through chapter 2, verse all the way to verse 10, and we see this word again that opens... Our, the, this part of our thinking process, we see that word wherefore. Now remember what we've told you about the word wherefore. When you see the word wherefore, you make sure you determine what it's there for. And it's referring back to the following, the uh, previous paragraph. And the previous paragraph was talking about, remember you were dead in trespasses and sin and he's made you alive in Christ Jesus. And so beginning in verse 11, we'll pick up the thought. Paul has helped us understand, first of all, who we are in Christ Jesus. And I promise you, if you under, begin to understand who He has made you, the position He's given you, the power and authority He's bestowed in you, if you'll begin to embrace that as a biblical fact in your life, not just in your head, but in your life, I promise you, your life will begin to be joyous and full of amazing grace. And so he reminds us here in chapter 2, verse 11, Wherefore, remember, remember, remember you were dead in trespasses and sin, and he's made you alive in Christ Jesus. You had nothing to do with it. You were the recipient of grace, and he birthed you into a brand new life. It's amazing. Have you ever... Have you ever got a hold of this thing is uh, that your new life is not yours at all. You and I are just living the life of Christ inside Him. He did not extend our life to make our lives eternal. He actually brought us into His life, which was eternal. And therefore, it doesn't have an end. Amen? It also doesn't have a beginning. It's infinite because it is His life that He gave us. And so when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that's the life he's talking about. And that's the life that Paul is speaking about here. So he said, I want you to remember that you being in times past, Gentiles, and literally that term was a very disfavorable term in the Scripture. It was something like, you know, you. in fact, the Jews used to call anyone that wasn't a Jew, by the way, as a Gentile. There's no other class, scripturally speaking. When you see the term Jew and Greek, it literally means Jew and Gentile. Anything that wasn't a Jew was a Gentile. And by the way, you can't become 
a Jew by decision. You are a Jew by birth. And you can't become a Christian by decision. You become a Christian by birth. And that's the birth of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He births you into the family of God. So Paul said, don't forget, in times past, you were Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision or Gentile dogs, non-Jewish Gentile dogs. Um, you say, well, that sounds very, very semantic. You yeah, really mean it that way. And by the way, it's not a lot different now. I know people now that think because that something about their heritage makes them better than other people. And the truth of the matter is the Jew was wrong and so are you if you feel that way. By the way, the ground is level at the cross. It doesn't matter where you come from, your social life, your economic life, or your, uh, your, your national life, or your generic life. It doesn't matter, genetic life, not generic. So therefore, he reminds us in times past, you were Gentiles or the uncircumcised in the flesh. And uh, he says, and that were called... The circumcision, those that call you in the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. Now, he's saying their circumcision, the Jews' circumcision, was an act of human humanity, although it was keeping of the law. The law demanded that the Jewish, Jewish man be circumcised. And it was an act of a covenant that God made with His people. And we're going to speak a great deal about covenants because it's an amazing thing that we don't understand that the reason we are... Christian today is because of covenant that God made with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we're included in that covenant. A covenant is, is an agreement, a deal, a testament. We have two covenants in the Bible, at least two. That's the Old, Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and then the New Testament, the New Covenant that God made with His Son. So you and I are a part of that covenant that God the Father made with the Son. And literally He sent the Son to be the purchasing, a purchasing agent. And he sent the Holy Ghost to be the earnest of the purchase made and seal that purchase until the day of redemption through the Father and the Son. And we are the instruments that God closed up in that deal. He simply said, I'm purchasing you with the blood of my Son. I'm sealing you with the Holy Ghost until I come back to get you or either I call you home. That's the covenant that God made with in the New Testament. So he says, he says that at that time, verse 12, you were, you and I, were without Christ. Being aliens, or non-participants, if you will, or strangers, from the commonwealth of Israel. And again, he uses the word strangers. From the covenants, there's that word, of promise. Having no hope. And without God in the world. That's a sad condition to be in. Would you not readily agree? Uh, listen to that again. Here's what we were. At that time you were without Christ. And here's the condition of anyone without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. What a... You know, I read that this afternoon again, and I thought, man, what a sad commentary, but what a, an amazing truth. That's who we were. That's what we were. That was the condition we were in before we met Jesus Christ. And I want you to look at that word covenant again, because someone asked me recently, there's a big thing today about oh, no, marriage isn't a big deal. You know, you just kind of live together and, and do it. Let me say something to you. If you're a believer, I, I need to say something to you so you get it. Marriage is a covenant that a man makes with a woman just like God made a covenant with Israel. That God made a covenant through Christ with the Christians. Marriage is just as important to believers as before there's, there's, there's any kind of intimacy as it is with God, with, the, with His Son. We can't become a Christian until we agree to God's covenant. And I'm convinced that if we understood that whenever people stand before God and they make a covenant together, until death do we part. Now, someone asked my wife one time, have you ever thought about divorce? She said, divorce? No. Murder? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
But we're still together for whatever the reason, because I'm assuming she hasn't determined to spend the rest of her life in prison, except with me. So, but this covenant thing is so important, because unless you understand that God, God has made a covenant, and that's why we are recipients of, of the grace covenant that God made with His Son, Jesus Christ. So, this is why we need to know that any time there's any kind of, there can't be a godly relationship under any condition without a covenant. God made the covenant with Israel. There could not be any, any relationship between Israel and God until that covenant was filled. Between Jesus Christ and the church, it could not be a relationship with Jesus Christ until that covenant was fulfilled. That's why it's so important. I've even, I've even had people say, well, I believe, uh, I believe, I believe marriage is just a piece of paper. Well, God doesn't think so. Let me say what he says about it. He says that it's called adultery or fornication without a marriage license. No matter what, we might change our mind about it. God's not going to change His mind because He made it plain. And the truth is, now in some countries today, you, could do, you can't do that in America because in America, the law is you're to have a license and a marriage, a, a ceremony, before you have a marriage. I know this is really boring because y'all already agree with it, but you hadn't decided if you agree with it or not. But the truth is, we don't have to agree with it to make it, try, make it true. God already made it true. Amen? So it's important. The covenant relationship is vital for us to understand because we have a co- God made a covenant and we're part of that covenant. This is why I can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I can have intimacy with Jesus Christ. You know why? Because of the covenant that God made with His Son. And he continued with this. We were without hope and without God in the world. But, verse 13, now, in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. The covenant was fulfilled on the cross when the Lord Jesus Christ said, It is finished. And the blood was applied, was spilled, was made available for the cleansing of all sin. And then when we were participated in the act that God gave us by He giving us faith so that we could trust His Son by grace through faith and birthed us into that family covenant so that we could have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you something. Any person who claims to know Jesus Christ as Lord and you're not, you don't have an intimate relationship with Him, I can tell you there's two, two of the possibilities. Number one, intimacy is an absolute must in the covenant relationship because a casual relationship won't work in a covenant. It means commitment. The covenant is a commitment. And therefore, do you know how, how much God is committed to us? He was so committed He sent His Son. I'd call that commitment, would you not? Well, He expects that same kind of commitment. I said the other, the other not when I was teaching or whatever, I've forgotten how to First John, that God's desire is that we love Him exactly like He loves us. When you're in an intimate relationship and you're married, don't you expect your, your spouse to have love you just like you love them? Hello, is anybody out there? Sure, that's what we expect. Well, God expects that too. He uses the same word when He talks about, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. And well, that's how He loves us. He doesn't hold anything back. I'm amazed that we feel like we can just kind of have a casual relationship with God. There's no such thing. It's a cold relationship if it's casual. Any other relationship is considered to be a commitment. Isn't that a wonderful truth? Did you get that? You may not like it, but it's in there. It's in there. It's important. So he said, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were Sometimes we're far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ for He is our what? Mm. Running around trying to find peace. and <laughs> Peace isn't a it. Peace is a Him. Amen? He is our peace who hath made both one. Now, all of a sudden, He's talking about you're no longer that uncircumcised Gentile dog. And the Jew, by the way, is no longer an outstanding up, uh, up to the top tier, if you would, circumcised under the covenant of God. 
You know what they are? The same as we are. United in the blood of Jesus Christ and wedded to the Son. By the way, He's going to be their bridegroom also. I'll show you that. Some have this idea that, that the Jew and the Gentile are totally separate in one sense. I'm not talking about replacement theology. I'm talking about a breaking down in the middle wall of partition. Look at the next rest of that verse. For He is our peace who hath made both one. No more Jews. No more Gentiles. That time's going to come and already is. And hath broken down, past tense, the middle wall of partition between us. Isn't that amazing? You said, well, what about Israel? How does God feel about Israel? She's still the apple of his eye. According to the word of God, she's still cherished. And I've got to say something to you. Whosoever and whatever nation blesses Israel, God will bless that nation. And the nation that curses Israel, God shall curse them. One of the biggest mistakes the United States of America has made, well, besides many, is this as they're now drawing back from not supporting Israel. That's the most dangerous thing this country's ever done. In my opinion, we're standing on... I'm not getting into politics, I'm getting into theology, okay? Verse 15, this is what happened. This is how that middle wall of partition was broken down. I'm glad tonight there's no such thing in the family of God as black or white, or, or blue or green, or, or orange or yellow. I'm glad we're all... By the way, any human being on life, you, you slice their finger, they'll bleed red. And I, as one fellow said one time, you skin us, we all look the same. Maybe we need to skin us. At least for some people. God help us. And it's, it's an amazing thing. I know when we first came out here on Highway 20, I had a, had a fellow in, in the church and I'm not being critical I'm just telling you how, how easy it is for people to get hung up in fact we attempted to, to, to get a, a church started over in Gadsden County years ago and uh, they, we went and met with some Christians and a couple of pastors and, and when they found out that we were interested in trying to get someone to start a Bible believing black church I'll never forget what I was told that night in that meeting they said well no we're not going to do that and I said well why? Say, well, we don't believe black people are going to heaven. This is a pastor that said that, or claimed to be a pastor. And I said, you know what? I have trouble believing you're going. <laughs> and I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me carefully. There's no place in a Christian's life, no place in a Christian's life for racism of any kind. Amen. I don't care how it is. So he says... By the way, who, you know what, if, if Jesus had died for one color, I'd have been the wrong color shores of the world. And you would have too, amen? I'm glad that God chose to get His Son's blood to break down the middle wall of partition, and we're all one. Say amen. I, I never could understand that. I, and He says, now He has abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments. Now, He hasn't abolished the commandments. Listen to the rest of it. He has abolished the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. The ordinances had to do with the sacrificial law. It had to do with, and I made this statement, I'm so thankful this morning I didn't have to get up, oh, by the way, on the Sabbath, not on, not on the first day of the week. I'm glad I didn't have to get up Saturday morning or late Saturday, Friday afternoon and go down and run down a little sheep so I could take him down to the, to the tabernacle and have the priest to make offering for me to God. I, wouldn't you see me, this fat preacher, out trying to chase down a little sheep? I'd be in trouble, amen? But I'm thankful that the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, abolished the tradition, the, the ordinances, and fulfilled every law so that tonight I can walk right into the throne room of God because the blood's been applied and He's my Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. If that don't stir you, you need a new stirrer. And here's what He did. For to make in Himself of twain or of two... One new man, so making peace. Guess what? Every Christian in this world is my brother or my sister. Everyone. Doesn't matter. 
That's amazing how sometimes we think because some Christians think a little bit different maybe. And we even have, don't, don't misunderstand me, doctrine is important. Bible doctrine is absolutely important. But let me tell you something. The body of Christ should never be divided over small things. Small things. I know some Christians that won't have something to do with another Christian because of some of the silliest things I've ever heard of in my life. 